Good evening and welcome to the annual Appreciation of Beautification Awards. My name is Marcy Post and I am the City Staff Representative for the Beautification Advisory Committee, which is a subcommittee of our Parks and Recreation Department for the City of Midland. I ask at this time if you please turn off your cell phones, we would really appreciate it. Uh, please be aware that I do have copies of the MGTV replay schedule. It looks like everybody's got one. If you need anything from me, I have left some business cards at the back of the room. I also have some photos in a slideshow you'll see. If you like a copy of any of those photos, I can easily email those to you. Each year, the Beautification Advisory Committee sponsors two very important events. In the spring, we celebrate the Make Midland Beautiful Art Program. This program asks local second and sixth graders to draw a poster on what makes Midland beautiful to them. One poster is selected from each participating elementary, junior high, parochial, and charter school within the city of Midland. The artists are given special recognition at the council meeting in May, which is one of our most favorite days. Each fall, we sponsor this program, the Appreciation of Beautification Awards. Amy Tolton is the chair of the Beautification Advisory Committee, and at this time, I'd like to ask Amy to come to the podium. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you here for our award program. Each year, nine residents of Midland who are members of the Beautification Committee travel around their assigned area of Midland looking for homes and businesses which have beautiful landscaping or have made significant improvements in their home's landscaping or structure and businesses that have done the same. Every year we are pleased to find that many citizens who put forth effort to do just that. This year there were 62 nominations made by committee members and the public. And then each person in our committee of nine viewed all 62 nominations and we voted. And those are the winners who are being recognized tonight. In addition, a special award, the Betty R. Toller Award, will also be presented tonight. Now I have the honor of introducing the Beautification Awards Committee's members. If you would stand as I call your name, Abby Clearhout. Brian Frankovich, Joe Kaju, Nellie Mundhunk, Gina Peterson, Rudy Phillips, and Nancy Wells. Thank you. <laughs> Not able to be with us tonight is Steve Jenkins. Before we proceed to the actual awards, we recognize the properties that receive honorable mention in their efforts for landscaping and structural site improvement. This year's honorable mentions are 3901 Woodlawn Street, Rochelle Socorro, 2902 Mount Vernon Drive, <coughs> Daniel and Angelica Murray, 2608 Greenwich Circle, Allen and Becky Murray, 1313 Ohio, Mary Beth O'Connor. 924 Balfour, Tamara L. Hayhoe. 18 Brown Court, Ralph and Sharon Forsberg. 3914 Aspen Way, Richard and Vicki Sipp. 4809 Moreland Court, Bruce and Nancy Brown. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Mayor Maureen Donker. It really is a pleasure to be here with all of you tonight because um, you do so much for our community and I'm just proud to be able to stand up here and thank you for all that you do. So let me start first with this committee. Now I know that Amy introduced to all of them, but let me just say this. These folks put a lot of time and effort into this project, driving around town, um, trying to make these decisions, which really aren't all that easy because you do an incredible, beautiful job uh, in your yards and with your businesses. But they do a credible, beautiful job, and they have fun doing it. So I want to say thank you on behalf, behalf of the city, to our staff, and all our volunteers who make this happen. So I applaud you. Thank you. <laughs> so on behalf of the city, 
We want to thank all of you. And I would like to introduce Councilman Steve Arnosky. Steve, just stand for a second. He's um, the council person um, here in Midland 2, Ward 4, 3, sorry, Ward 3. Um, and so it, we really appreciate all that you do. And let me, let me just tell you why this is important. There was a study that was done. It's called The Soul of the Community, Why People Love Where They Live and Why Does It Matter? And this was a study that came out in 2010. It was done by the Knight Foundation. And the Knight Foundation owns newspapers across the country. And what they did in The Soul of the Community was they identified 10 attributes on which um, make people attached to the communities that, where they live. And aesthetics is the third one on that list, the third important on the list. Diversity of services, welcoming, and aesthetics are the top three, ahead of economic development, ahead of education, and ahead of business. Those are the top three. And aesthetics in Midland is really important um, because we don't have the natural beauty that comes from being on a lake or living in the mountains. We have to create the beauty that we have here. And government can't do all of that. It really takes everyone to do it. And you create the beauties the beauty in out in our community, in the homes, in the neighborhoods that people see. And it really is important for us. It really helps people attract and love where they live. And so thank you very much for what you do to make that happen. Um, it also encourages your neighbors, kind of like, I call it kind of a behavioral economics thing, you know, ooh, they're getting an award, maybe I can get that award. It kind of encourages people um, to do even more. So what you do is very important and we thank you and we hope that you're doing it you know, to feed your own souls and that you love being out in your yard, but it truly does make a difference here. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you and um, thank you so much for, for what you do to this, for this community. And so now I'd like to introduce Gina Peterson for the next part of our program. Thank you, Mayor. I will be describing the first set of houses that are being honored for landscaping achievements. In case you are wondering, they're in alphabetical order. Okay, by street. All right, the first one is 2303 Cleveland Avenue, owned by Thomas and Ruth Wegner. This 1950s house and yard has been transformed over the decades. Neat planting beds with shrubs and perennials flank the generous walkway. There are decorative urns on the porch and a lovely accent tree and bed right beside the walk to welcome visitors to the door. Thomas and Ruth can't be here tonight, but they did respond that they have always tried to add to the appearance of the neighborhood to the betterment of their general surroundings. We will make sure they get their award. Next one is 5906 Inverness Circle, owned by Ramon and Carolee Roth, and it is a large two-story with sweeping beds. Masses of shrubs, grasses, and perennials, along with hanging baskets and planters, highlight the welcoming entry and wraparound porch. Accents of annuals add punch to the lush landscape. Flowering trees add spring interest, and a large hydrangea enhances the garden in late summer. They're not able to be here tonight, but we will make sure they get their award. Okay, the third one, 805 Kenny Court, owned by Tom and Marianne Howard, welcomes you with masses of colorful petunias and other annuals and carefully tended shrubs and perennials, hanging baskets, window boxes, and the clever use of statues, chairs, and decorative plaques completes the country cottage look. Mary Ann, can you come forward and accept your award and tell us about your garden? Okay. Well, first of all, I'm not a master gardener, so I make lots of mistakes, but um, I garden because I love it, and I'm proud of our street, I'm proud of my house, and I uh, just get a lot of satisfaction of going out and puttering around. And uh, my husband, 
he can't hardly lift the shovel, so <laughs> he's no help. <laughs> he would prefer to sit in the, the chair on the porch and watch me work. So uh, thank you for this award. I tr cherish uh, the honor, and I look forward to next season when I can go out and plant again. <laughs> Seven oh five Linwood Drive is owned by Bruce and Carol Peck. It's a large corner lot, and love for gardening gardening is evident in the colorful window boxes, corner street garden, and small succulent garden, as well as the expansive front garden leading to the front door. A shady retreat under the flowering crab apple also boasts colorful roses, while the shady side garden has lovely hostas. It is a treat from three sides. Bruce and Carol, please come accept your award and tell us about your garden. Well, it's hard to know what to say. Um, I'll start out by, I remember my grandmother uh, sitting and reading seed catalogs all winter long, <laughs> and as there was so much snow on the ground, but it gave her something to hope for, um, and she thought of the, about the happy hours that were going to be coming up, and she could be back in her garden again. It was always beautiful. Well, Bruce and I have been experimenting in our yard for 48 years. Um, we moved in, we didn't know much. Uh, but Bruce's dad told us we better do something or the neighbors wouldn't like us. So we've tried. Um, we're not ambitious enough to start with seeds, like my grandmother. Um, but we have learned a few things over the years. We've learned what works and what doesn't. Um, not all seeds come up. Um, Lily of the Valley, a little goes a long way. Uh, Raspberries are not to be counted on for dessert because the birds and the kids will eat them before they get to the table. Uh, let's see, we've, um, we've learned to ask for help and we've accepted it graciously. Uh, lots of people have ideas, lots of people have given us plants. Um, when we're finished with raking this fall, we're going to start looking forward to what we can do next spring. So thank you very much for noticing our, our um, efforts. It's nice to be here. And now Nellie Mudding will introduce the next set of uh, houses. Hello. The first. Um, home that I'm going to recognize tonight is 6009 Londonberry, and it's owned by Bill and Barb Derry. Um, Bill and Barb have taken great care in planning their landscaping from the day that their home was built. <laughs> their labor of love and the care they've taken is immediately evident. Spectacular annual plantings provide pops of color that take your eye around the beautiful grounds. Mature shrubs and trees and perfectly placed plantings frame the wonderful home nicely. Bill and Barb, would you like to come forward to accept your award and tell us a little bit about your home? Yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> your last chance to go. Nobody uses this. <laughs> Again, thank you, uh, City of Midland, and thank you, Nellie, for the uh, kind comments. It was 28 years ago we built this house, and as you can tell by the landscaping, this isn't the original, although there are original plantings there. That tree is original, and some of the euonymus is original. Uh, some of the globe yews on the far side are still original. So a lot of pruning over 28 years, but in the last five years, a lot of transition. Um, I wrote a, a little note to, to the city about what, how we did this. Um, we, a lot of thanks to Rich and Kelly Piotrowski out at Kuchis because they help us with our planters. 
Uh, they take them indoors early in the spring before we could have them outdoors and get a jump start on them. It might be a little hint to do. Um, we found that cluck nurseries have much uh, more mature specimens and they're larger. So when you're going from an old uh, mature yard and you want something not looking brand new, uh, that's a place to maybe consider shopping. And lastly, uh, locally here, Cahoon's, our lifesaver for fertilizer and pest control and just a wealth of knowledge uh, down there. So thank you. Um, the, the, we, interestingly enough, did win this award in 1999. We were not able to attend, so we were not able to thank people in person. So again, thank you twice. Thank you. The next home that was chosen is 409 Longview Street, and it is owned by Dale and K Karen Wegener. The Wegener's landscaping is the picture of lush greenery. Giant ferns and hanging baskets frame the welcoming front porch. Sedum peeks out from a wonderful rock pathway that leads to a side garden with beautiful plants framing the gate. Annual plantings and baskets are tucked in to create a magical garden for all to enjoy. Um, Karen was not able to be here tonight to accept her award, but we'll make sure that she does receive it. The next award is for 608 West Main Street, and that is owned by John and Beth Van Volkenberg. I have the benefit of driving by this house every day, so I keep a close eye on how beautiful it is. Um, it's um, a beautiful foundation, plantings, and large trees complement this historic home. The owners have, loving, have lovingly made structural updates to make this home a true Midland landmark. Could John and Beth Volkenberg please come up to accept their award? <laughs> this is our home. <laughs> we really are honored by this. Uh, when we purchased the McCann House, we were delighted to be purchasing a little bit of Midland's history. Um, we've always felt that when you buy a home, you also buy a part of the neighborhood. And you're therefore uh, charged with keeping the integrity of that neighborhood. That became a little more evident to us tonight, um, as we noticed that the pictures on the, the board out there are actually our neighbor's beautiful <laughs> house, which is gorgeous and inspires us daily to, to do things. But we do keep that in our mind whenever we're planning things, and our home is a work in progress right now. The house itself is the backdrop for anything we're doing with the landscaping. We see them sort of as, as a whole. We can't do the landscaping without also improving the house. But we also keep, we always keep in mind when we're making our plans for anything, not only will this enhance our lifestyle, make the house function better for us, will it add to the integrity of the house? Will it fit in the neighborhood? Will it please our neighbors? Because when you come right down to it, our neighbors see the exterior of our house a lot more often than we do. So it is very important that our neighbors appreciate and like what we do. For us, this confirms that we're on the right, the right path, that we're heading in the right direction with the, um, the work that we are currently doing on the home. Um, we hope that as we continue, you will continue to appreciate what we do. Um, this is a compliment that we do not take lightly. So thank you. And the last home um, that I'm going to present is 4608 Moreland Drive, owned by Cheryl and Raymond Witt. Cheryl has managed to keep a beautiful shade garden on her wooded lot. Large, beautiful, mature trees create a beautiful filter of light on her hostas, hydrangeas, and other perennials. As a non-Michigan native, this home is everything I love about the woodsy homes in Michigan and their commitment to keep nature a focal point in their yards. Cheryl and Raymond were not able to come this evening, but we'll be sure that they get their award. And now Nancy will come up and present some awards. The first home I will be doing is 5206 Ridgeview Court. 
Christine and Barry Kissendiel are the owners. This large home and lot features an attractive contoured landscape with a new lawn setting off various area gardens of flowering shrubs, rock edgings, and colorful flowers and lovely trees. It was a major overhaul of overgrown bush, bushes and plantings for the new property owners, Christine and Barry. A large work effort, yet rewarding, that not only enhanced their home, but also their neighborhood. Let me introduce to you Christine and Barry Kissendorf, Deal, and uh, please pick up your award as you come and tell us a little bit about your place. Thank you to everyone for this award. We moved into our house two years ago, and my daughter found this house for us. And we fell in love with the house, but it needed a major overhaul on the outside. I think we had one flower, one <laughs> desperate rose. <laughs> and um, we have really done a major overhaul. It is also definitely a work in progress and lots of baby plants and um, new plantings and Lots all the way around the back of our house, and my husband lives in the outdoors <laughs> all through the nice uh, months of the summer and spring and fall, and let him talk a little bit about what he's, he's the planter. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to come and be a part of this uh, program. Um, we did not know that there was a beautification award, um, and it's a pretty awesome occasion, and uh, the city. Um, when we moved into the house two years ago, um, everything was basically encroaching brush uh, onto the house. You and, couldn't even tell we had rock walls yeah. or retainer walls. It was, a um, it was a huge challenge. Uh, I enjoy being outside and both of us uh, enjoy uh, landscaping. And then, you know, we stood there and basically, where do we start? <laughs> But, you know, over the two years, uh, we started on the grass, the lawn, That's act which really didn't have much grass in it, uh, but with a lot of nurturing and care, we brought a lot of stuff back and, uh, you know, the flowers. I wish I could stand and tell you that this is how we planned everything, but we didn't. <laughs> um, keeps buying more things, <laughs> things just kept evolving and changing. But one theme that we really liked was color presenting color and we're so happy to uh, uh, to have this to present to the community and to meet so many friends and people walking by uh, which uh, has been great so thank you very much next is 1416 Scott Street and the owners are Dean and Barbara Plummer I visited this award-winning property on Monday and was confused by the nominated description. I saw no hostas, no side garden of gorgeous perennials or lush plantings. I approached a fellow raking and tidying up the yard, asking if he were the owner, Mr. Plummer. He, at the same time, was thinking I was some lady politician seeking <laughs> votes for next week's election. Well, I'm not a politician, but he was indeed the homeowner, and thus began a wonderful conversation about readying a lovely spring and summer landscape, as you will see, for fall and winter dormancy and downsizing one's gardening efforts. Uh, let me have uh, Dean and Barbara Plummer come up, receive your award, and tell you about their lovely landscape. <laughs> um, thank you very much for this award and this recognition. This um, house, this home, is where we resided for over 50 years. Uh, 
maybe uh, a few of you remember Stark Nursery on, uh, on Ashman. Well, Stark Nursery was the beginning of our landscaping, you know, these little puny things that you plant in as uh, beginning plants. And over the years, the front uh, yard has turned into a shade garden. And we've changed off, and hostas are our love now because of the shade and the pack of sander that keeps on growing, even though some people don't like it. Um, this garden is uh, on the side drive. It's no longer in existence. Uh, we're trying to simplify, but also we had neighbors, uh, new homeowners next door, and they tore out the hedge, which was fine. And this garden, uh, mostly perennials, needed to be, you know, re-dug and re well, that was a good excuse to make it a little simpler, okay? So it's not in existence anymore, but little does Dean know that I have a plan. Um, there's a, you can't see it in this photo, but there is a lamp post. And I recently returned from uh, Niagara on the Lake, and if you've ever been there, the gardens are wonderful. And um, they make um, big impact with little effort, I'm thinking. So next year, we're gonna we have big impact and little effort by the lamp post. And, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you again, Dean. They call it a labor of love. You know that each one of you that have a beautiful yard know that. It was, uh, it was interesting when Nancy came walking up the driveway, and it is very true that I said to myself, oh, oh here comes another politician. Now, what will I do with this one? I made up my mind. I had a rake in my hand. I was going to hand the rake to the politician and say, talk to me as you work. <laughs> Nancy was very sweet. She was very kind. And she said, where are all the flowers? Where's all the hostas? I said, it's all gone. Gone to the curb. Well, we pull these early so that we take advantage of the weather. And that's exactly what we did. Barb said, it, uh, we're downsizing. And everything seems to be going out, and I hope I'm not going to be going out. I think she'll keep me around. To the committee, thank you for selecting 1416 Scott Street. It's a beautiful home, and we truly enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. The next presentation is 6200 Sturgeon Creek Parkdale, uh, Parkway. Melissa Deffen Deffendorfer. <laughs> it's situated on a lovely natural setting of mature trees and shade-loving greenery. The homeowners appreciated their woodland oasis, yet wanted to incorporate some perennials, evergreens, and grasses into it. Challenged by soil and shade conditions and seeking advice from friends and experts, they have achieved a gorgeous landscape of color and texture, rocks and curves that beautifully blends with their home and wooded surroundings, a most pleasing sight to all who pass by. Please come up, Melissa, meet Melissa, and gather your lovely war ward. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy, so much. Um, my husband, Jeff, is not able to be here tonight. He just left this evening with two of our good friends from church to go to a weekend retreat. So he sends his best wishes. And uh, uh, I have to say many, many thanks to him for uh, being kind of the, as he likes to call himself, the pack mule. And you could see in the picture, the pickup, the Nissan Titan there that hauls many heavy things, including this was very early in the season. Actually, I still had a pile of um, rocks sitting uh, on the edge of the driveway there that I continued to do some landscaping with this uh, early summer. And with our growing season, uh, with the rain and the heat and help from Cahoons with their rose and garden uh, powder that uh, uh, we like to call it fairy dust at our house, it just does magical things. 
Um, I can't take credit for all of this. Mother Nature certainly has helped uh, with a lot of this, with the weather. But she's presented some challenges too because our soil being by the creek is extremely acidic. It's um, very sandy. And I'm still trying to discover a way to landscape with moss because it grows really well in our, our neighborhood. Um, that's, there's been a lot of trial and error and I uh, have had a lot of fun with that. I used to live in Manistee along Lake Michigan where everything's sunshine and again sandy soil but very dry. And we um, came here, I, I actually moved here in 2006. Um, I was single at the time and uh, this was a very restorative yard for me and I was recruited for a job here. I came here in some life changes and it just helped me heal. It was really, really wonderful. I got to meet a lot of neighbors working out in the yard and hopefully I got to uh, give them a little bit of pleasure by them passing by on bicycles and we have a lot of dog walkers in our neighborhood. So um, I wanna thank the committee for taking a look at my house. What a wonderful surprise. We came back from a two week trip and we, uh, I saw this letter and I said, it's either a tax bill or a notice that I'm in a floodplain. <laughs> so I'm glad I opened it and it was this lovely invitation. And I hope I can be an inspiration. We have a lot of young families moving into our neighborhood, and I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be inspired by uh, walking by and enjoying the different plantings. I'm, I'm very honored and humbled. Thank you. The next presentation I'll be making is for a non-residential landscaping. And it's 30, uh, 3900 Centennial Drive, CCMP Developers. I remember this two-story, modern-looking office building and commercial property winning a beautification award back in 2011. The owner has maintained the attractive foundation plantings that are ac accented by Japanese red maples, roses, boxwood, and spreading junipers. There's globe lighting within the plantings, adding to the well-designed appearance. This rigorous maintenance and improvement of building and grounds make the property a standout in the local business community. I will be introducing Nick Lafever, and um, please come up, Nick, and tell us about I'm going to add it to the collection, I guess. Uh, I'm very happy to accept this award on behalf of CCMP developers. Our principal, Rick Sherritt, couldn't be here, so he sends me instead. And I'm happy to be here and thank you, Nancy, and to everyone for this award. I wish I could take credit, like the labor of love, like so many of you have done, but uh, I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> oversaw some of it and uh, looked at it. I come and make sure that things are picked up and that usually involves making a phone call to Leroy Kleinhand and say, why isn't this cleaned up? Um, and he does an excellent job for us maintaining it, which is really the key. The work went in and it needs to be maintained. Remember the work was done. Um, our prime company is uh, interior contractors. So a bunch of construction guys in drywall and when the work was going on, the first question I got was why? Uh, no one's ever here, doesn't matter, but we wanted to maintain the building and make sure it looks good and stays looking good, and which is what we've done, and, and this award is proof positive of that. So thank you again so very much. Our next presenter is Rudy Phillips. The next category for residential and non-residential structural site improvement. The residential category we choose was 1600 Clover Lane owned by Gregory and Amanda Tunick. And I know that the two, the two children are anxious to get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> the front of the former Cape Cod home was torn down and rebuilt in, more, in a more traditional style. This beautiful home now has a centered front door 
traditional windows and formal partico, partitio. During the rebuilding, materials that could have been salvaged were later reused or donated to others in a commitment to the environment. Gregory and Amanda, would you please come forward and receive your awards? Well, thank you. Um, we actually became friends with the past owners through this process, and um, the past owners, a lot of folks know them in the community. They were the Kellums. They lived in the house for 62 years, and um, when I wrote the purchase agreement for the home, I said, we'd love your home. Um, we would love to make it our forever home, and do a couple changes and uh, they said well we'd like to sit down and meet you so we met with them and we um, laid out our plans and they were like what <laughs> and uh, but they quickly gave us our, their blessing and they said yes we'll sell this home to you um, with the grounds with the understanding that you will love it and make it your own um, and so everything we've done has been to make it our permanent home and um, we redid um, the house from the foundation up so if uh, anybody noticed on the previous picture the main foundation of the home was an L so we cut off the L and we made it a rectangle um, and then what we did is we pretty much added 300 square feet is all we added by um, ripping down that roof line, but putting those walls straight up instead of a slanted roof gave us that 300 feet. Uh, we added a bedroom, we added a master bathroom, uh, we added nine closets, four walk-in closets. Um, our master ended up 26 feet, so it's, it's gonna hold our needs for, for a long time. Um, and the previous owners had um, knocked on our door throughout the process, so that was really fun. But um, we appreciate the committee for, you know, taking notice in our little project. And then um, also we'd like to just thank the city. Um, working throughout this project, excuse me, throughout this process, I served as the general contractor, and the city made it so easy for us. Um, simply even from picking up our large rubbish at the curb. You know, my contractors were not from Midland. And uh, I said, guys, stop. Get this big stuff to the curb. And they were like, no way, lady. And uh, I said, yeah, watch this. They take it free of charge. You know, and they were just amazed, my contractors from Claire. And they were like, are you kidding me? You know, they took that whole pile of stuff. I said, yeah, you know. Um, but the city inspectors, the office staff, everybody made it so easy for us. And. Uh, when the city makes it easy, it's easier for us. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, almost. Okay, the, the next three categories are for non-residential categories, um, residential um, areas. And I'm looking at the site and see if it appears Anyway, it's the, yeah, that's correct. The Midland Furniture Garage. This historical building on the circle, most of us will remember as the Firestone tire garage, where you get your new tires or change them or rotate them. What a change of coat of paint can do. By highlighting the architectural features of the building with contrasting colors has given this building a very modern look. The inside of the garage was remodeled and turned into a furniture showroom. Well worth going through, by the way. Improvements were made on the sidewalk for easy access from the circle and small and a small outdoor plaza. 
I don't think Donald Carmody, Carmody and Kevin Harrison, Harrison are here. They didn't sign up earlier, so uh, we will make sure that they get the award. <coughs> The next uh, improvement we all know about is the Midland Courthouse. Many community foundations and the Midland County Board of Commissioners made this expansion to the Midland Courthouse possible. Attention was not only given to match the existing building, but to ensure it blended into the streetscape. In addition, extensive upgrading was done inside on each floor Adjustments were made to offer a better layout for the public and staff. New entrance was added to the river side of the building, allowing access to a secure entryway, handicap access, and snow melting systems were also installed. Please come forward, Bridget Granson, and she is going to introduce, from what I understand, a lot more other people that I don't know. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So I think one of the things we heard the mayor say earlier today is that aesthetics are important in a community, but local government can't do that on its own, and we couldn't either. Uh, we had the support of a lot of foundations and certainly the financial commitment from the community or the um, foundations in this community made that project possible. And we had uh, a really um, great amount of support from the County Board of Commissioners, a lot of collaboration with the city, and great uh, insight from the people that were on our construction committee and some of those folks are here tonight that I'd like to introduce. Jim Geisler, who's one of our county commissioners, was also on the construction committee. <laughs> Judge Stephen Karras was the chair of the construction committee. <laughs> Judge Ludington was on our construction committee. And we have to give credit to the design to um, Dave Kaiser from Archiverde, who was our architect. <laughs> and we couldn't have pulled the project off without Spence Brothers, who was our con uh, construction manager, and Matt Spence from Spence Brothers is here tonight. So I'd like to give the um, microphone over to Kevin and just uh, let him talk about for a few minutes um, what a labor, labor of love this was for him. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the courthouse is really a gem to this community. I do not live in Midland. I have worked here for 35 years. I think I get a different perspective than those of you who walk up and down the street and see it every day. It never ceases to amaze me. Every day of the year, you'll find somebody with a camera taking a picture of that building. If you go to eBay and you type Midland, Michigan, you're gonna find Dow Chemical and you're gonna find a postcard of that building. And the commitment this community's made to keeping that jewel, that gem in as beautiful a shape as it is, is has been the biggest honor of my life working here. Uh, the additions that were made the renovations, uh, that, that building is something to be proud of as Midlanders for at least the next 50 years. I mean, they, they really extensively went throughout, could have done it without the support, as Bridget said, of the foundations, but a, you know, a great architect, a great uh, construction manager that uh, I, I heard someone say they you know, ripped into a house and remodeled, grab a 1924 structure and try to bring it to some modern standards. And every wall you pulled down was another surprise and you'd sit there and look at each other and go, well, you know, that, that's not exactly what we thought we were looking at. And you'd stop and kind of on the fly come up with another plan. And, and it turned out beautifully. If you have not been in there, 
We're open five days a week, Monday through Friday. You don't have to come in to pay a ticket. You're welcome to stop in and see what's going on. And I encourage you to because it really is a piece of living history that uh, really is, is a crown jewel here in, in Midland. Thanks, everyone. My final presentation will be for the Midland Brewing Company. The corner of Saginaw and Dublin has seen many varieties of businesses. I remember a McDonald Nursery and a clothing store, to name a few. This great addition to the city is called the Midland Brewing Company. One can enjoy a variety of craft beers and tasty food. There's a lawn and fire pit for seasonal outdoor dining at the back of along the rail trail. The latest addition is the conversion of a building called the Red Cake now that has space up to 100 in a covered outdoor deck and landscape beer garden. Please come forward, Dave and Patty Kepler. Well, thank you. We're uh, really appreciative of uh, this award. Uh, we didn't start out to do this. My, we had acquired the uh, Cottage Creamery, which was next door, which was my wife's project. And she kind of pointed me over to the brewery one day and said, could you talk, go talk to them? They could, we could use some of their parking lot, and they could kind of improve their building a little bit. And <laughs> I, I went back and explained, well, the doors are chained, and uh, I think they're going through some challenges. And the owner of the building was um, down in southern uh, Michigan. Um, he was thinking of turning it into a dollar day store, so I didn't want to go back to my wife and explain to her that she was going to have uh, probably the same kind of building uh, look to that. So we got involved with the brewery and, and built that. This was an uh, old uh, Robert Hall building. Uh, we were next to the rail trail, so we actually went out and I grabbed some pictures of what, because uh, it was a square brick building, what uh, old rail stations would look like. Most of them in Michigan and the rural areas were wood, but we found some brick ones, as was the Midland one that burned down. Um, and so I went to Pat Blackhurst and said, here's a picture, here's a building. Um, he's a good designer and contractor, an old school guy, and we came up with that building. Um, not that building, but the building be before that. This one was an uh, old uh, construction uh, building that had turned into Wallace uh, Landscaping. So we kind of negotiated that. and. It's hard to explain what that design is, but that was mine. So we, it was a red keg, red keg named after the original uh, bar that was in the l a lumber camp in, in Averill. And so when we started to clean it up, uh, we thought, why not put a red keg in front of it and stuff. And then we did all the landscaping this year through Reader and stuff to, to do. So we're, we're proud of it, and I um, think we've made a good entrance way for uh, uh, Midland on the west side. And... Uh, it's great on the rail trail, too. So thanks for the city and county, because I know we kind of pushed some things to get sidewalks built into the buildings from the rail trail and a uh, few things that don't quite fit normal convention, but all within the uh, code. Uh, so thank you very much, and we appreciate the uh, recognition. I just want to say that the, the beautiful um, weeping willows, um, everybody wanted to take them down because nobody likes weeping willows. I just want to tell you that I'm the only person that said, save the weeping lows. So I know they're a pain, but they, they <coughs> made the backyard, so that's, that's my comment. <laughs> By the way, their creamery is a great place to visit, too, from the rail trail. <laughs> I believe the next one is Amy. Thank you, Rudy. As the committee chair, I have the pleasure of introducing the Betty R. Toller Civic Commitment Award. Now, this award is not given out every year. It is a very special recognition of an outstanding civic commitment and a major community accomplishment. Aesthetic considerations, visibility to the general public, 
a significant factor in attracting tourism to Midland and making Midland a more visitor-friendly city, enhancing the quality of life for Midland residents are all factors in deciding whether to award the Betty R. Toller Award. This year's presentation goes to the Tridge Renewal Project. In April 2017, the Tridge underwent a major renovation made possible by the generous support of the Roland M. Gerstacker Foundation. Dreis ice blasting was used to remove old stain, new oil stain, uh, oil base stain was applied. The original decking was replaced with 70,000 pounds of new Douglas fir. Railings were repaired and replaced. All three arches were capped with epoxy resin board to reduce water penetration and caps were placed on all upright railing posts to preserve the exposed wood. A new color changing LED lighting system was installed and three new benches were placed at the center of the tridge with a new center light pole. It took eight months to complete this and cost 2.7 million and this project was to make the Tridge look new again and prolong its life for the future of Midland residents. As a follow-up to this Betty R. Toller Civic Commitment Award, this project will also be submitted for a state award to Keep Midland Beautiful, accepting the Keep Michigan Beautiful. Accepting the award tonight will be Karen Murphy on behalf of the city. Karen? I just want to say it's, it was truly an honor to be part of this project. Um, I was a young girl in 1981, standing at the foot of the Tridge when they first dedicated it. And um, I always had a, a, a passion for the Tridge. Um, Kevin mentioned the iconic um, courthouse, and the Tridge is just another icon for the city of Midland. Um, for those of us that have, have grown up here, it's, it's fantastic to see it brought back to life. Um, this could not have been made possible without the very generous support of the Roland M. Gerstecker Foundation. And it's amazing to live in a community where you're sitting at a conference table in September saying, boy, the Tridge is looking pretty rough. We need to do some work to it. And then you're, uh, come April, you've got $2.7 million and you're renovating something that you've, that you've walked over your entire life. Um, so it was just amazing to bring it back to life. We're really excited to um, have all the recognition. Um, lots of people, I've, I've seen this picture, this backdrop in a lot of people's wedding photos and um, lots of people getting senior pictures taken down there. So it's great to see people get down there and enjoy it again. And hopefully the renovations we've done will take it many, many decades into the future. So thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. As a member of the committee, I believe that this beautification committee contributes greatly to the quality of life in our city and helps make Midland a great place to live. Thank you for participating in the 2018 City of Midland Beautification Awards. This concludes our program for tonight. Thank you all for coming. Good night.